Hey, today is 4-21-2024, and welcome to Escaping the Matrix. So, I had a awesome revelation early this morning, and I'm going to try as best I can to narrow it down and make this a short video in hopes that it does upload. So, if you are experiencing the same kind of attacks, the same kind of baby mama drama, haha, uh, the same kind of persecution, and if it's actually getting worse, if you go from place to place like I do, and it follows you, we know that this is signs of witchcraft attacks, but how do you overcome it? No one ever talks about how do you overcome these attacks. So... They were perpetrating, and who's they? Those that work for the Matrix, okay? They're still operating on the lower levels. They work for the darkness. It doesn't mean these people are evil inherently. Some are, but some don't know what they're doing. They've been programmed by the Matrix. They are controlled by the Matrix. Who is the controller of the Matrix ultimately? Lucifer, okay? So if you are resonating at a low level, the enemy, the darkness, can affect you. He can infect you. It can infect you. And then you affect everything else around you. And that's what's taking place. So during the great solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse, whatever you call it, that was on April 8th, they harnessed in darkness the opening of the portals of CERN and all that, which I think they're... They're still doing that now. It's continuing, and more of the darkness is coming on. And those that participated in watching it, unbeknownst to most of them, they participated in a huge satanic ritual. The darkening of the sun, the darkening of the light, the harnessing of the darkness. Lower level wicked beings that are being pulled in. So we, as Defenders of the truth, Father has called us, the Most High God, Adonai. He's called us defenders of the truth, keepers of the light. We are spread out throughout the planet, Janet. One of us can affect an entire city. We're a huge light grid. So they work for the other grid. Those of the matrix work for the the grid over the earth, it's an invisible grid, a web, like the web of lies, the internet, which is, who is the prince of the air? Satan. He's got the airwaves. All the, all the children that have been basically raised by Satan because they look at their phones all day, they stare at their computer screen, and they stare, the worst one is their tele-eye vision. So not only are they being programmed tele tell lie vision it's a lie of your visual eye gates and your ear gates right but they're also television programs they've been programmed and the younger ones under you know 20 even 25 30 grew up with us we that are older than maybe mid 30s we remember before all this we didn't have cell phones growing up. We played outside. We did sports. We um, hung out with friends and actually talked to each other. We had different kinds of hobbies. We read books, all those kind of things. They don't have that. So they've been basically raised by the system. Okay? So we need to pray for the younger ones to wake up to be shooken out of the system, those that can. Um, they're under a spell. That's why in scripture it says, O generation of vipers, who hath bewitched you? So they're under an actual spell. To break free of the spell, to break free of the matrix, you have to want truth more than the lie. And that's when we become unplugged. So all of us that have been, aka called targeted, it's really, we're being refined in the refiner's fire as gold. We're being persecuted just like Yeshua was to an extent, not as, not like him. Uh, I'm not at all lumping myself into what he went through, but we're having to go through a lot of these trials and tribulations to overcome by what? 
by the truth. We love the truth. We don't love the lies. Okay? So that's what Father is sharing with me is that I am, or I, as a sovereign soul, have been experiencing the same type of satanic attacks throughout the years, and they just get worse and worse. And it was happening again last night, and I'm like, okay, Father, what is this? Why does this follow me? And I'm in yet another area, okay? Why is this still going on? And he told me that you have not yet passed that test. You have to overcome it. You have to get out of your ego. And I'm like, but I'm not operating the ego. I'm just sitting here trying to quietly do a few things online. And um, he said, but you're allowing the negative thoughts of what they, those that work for the system, the matrix, are doing, perceived doing to you. Get out of that. That's lower level. And overcome it. Go for a walk. So even if it's raining, Go for a walk. Um, it was quite late at night, so I just tried to overcome it by thinking of different things, you know, thinking, filling my mind with positive things. But normally, if it wouldn't have been that late, I probably would have gone for a walk. Um, so whatever you can do to overcome the negative thinking, the negative chatter in your mind, okay? As The Matrix, the movie says, it's a... Well, it was Morpheus said to Neo, the matrix is a prison for your mind. Once you escape your thoughts, your negative thoughts that the enemy bombards us with day in and day out, you can escape the matrix. And so that's what Father's been sharing with me for several weeks now is to guard your heart above all else and keep your peace no matter what. So... I ended up saying something. It wasn't anything bad. I was just like, oh, brother, really? This late at night, really? And uh, I could feel my energy being taken from me. I literally could feel myself shrinking down, like going lower. And I'm like, no, I don't want this. I remain positive throughout the day. I'm not going to allow this to happen right before I'm going to go to sleep, okay? Never, never go to sleep with anger in your heart. So I repented of that and I asked Father to help clear it and he did. And I slept peacefully, by the way. I was attacked in my in my dreams, but I rebuked it when I woke up. We know that Satan is attacking us. Even while we're sleeping, we're doing battle. That's why if you wake up and you still feel extremely tired, that's why you've been battling in the spiritual realm. So now I'm gonna share with y'all what Father's telling me. With, with each attack, just remember that a lot of these people that are coming against us with noise campaigns, they love to do. That's one of their favorite things, right? Why? Why the noise campaigns? Because it takes away your peace, but only if you allow it to. So if you're having loud construction because it's a con act, right? Take a walk. Get out of there. Even if you have to be gone all day. Do not let something or someone steal your peace, okay? Once they get that, they can steal your, your energy. They suck your energy, okay? So those that are still part of the system that still believe the lie, they're being used by the system to affect and then infect, hopefully, those that have escaped the system. That's us, y'all. We're the ones that have escaped. So don't be surprised that there's so many things coming against us. But just remember that these people are not free like we are. Okay? So here's what Father was sharing with me. Um, back in Jesus' day, in Yeshua's day, and before... They wanted to shut up and kill those who warned of repentance and brought forth the truth. They hated the truth, and so they wanted to silence anyone speaking it so that they can go on sinning and worshiping fake idols and living in the ego. And that would be 
Jeremiah 26, 1 through 10, which I was led to early this morning. I'm just going to get a little piece of it, say a little piece of it. Word from the Lord to Jeremiah was repent. And he spoke to the priests and the prophets of this. And then the priests and the prophets in turn were angry because they didn't want to. They didn't want the truth. They loved a the lie. They loved being elevated. They, they were operating out of the ego. So they went and told the princes and all the people uh, tattling on lying to about Jeremiah, this man is worthy to die for he hath prophesied against the city because Jeremiah warned that if they didn't repent, the city would be destroyed. Sound familiar? It's also the story of Jonah and many other prophets that brought forth the truth. So when you're being slandered and you know, isolated, made homeless, and all these other things that they do, consider that a thumbs up from Father, that you are defending the truth. And in, in turn, we're saving souls whether we know it or not, y'all. And that's what we're here to do, shine a light and bring others to the truth. We're not saving souls. I misspoke. We're leading people to Yeshua who can save their soul. Okay, so again, Father keeps telling me, above all else, guard, guard your heart and then guard your peace. If they break your peace, then they get into your heart, okay? You find peace when you let go and let God take over. And I'm sure y'all have heard, let go and let God. It's true. Stop trying to fix it yourself. For me, it's my big mouth. Father's been having me on this journey for a long time about put a guard upon my mouth, Father, I have to say. Guard my mouth. I'm not going to ever retaliate. I'm not going to wish harm on somebody. I'm not going to do anything to get back at somebody. But my mouth, my mouth will react when I'm in the ego, which is operating at a lower level, and then you don't have any peace. Okay, then you can be controlled. Once somebody gets you to give your emotions, your neck. Now, if it's joy and you're like, yeah, oh, that was hilarious or something like that, positive emotions that come from, Love, joy, peace, understanding, long-suffering, faith, gentleness, kindness, all those things, that's different. You're lifting people up with your emotion. But when you're resonating at a low level and you're getting angry to somebody, I'm going to tell them off. And I know what you're doing, right? They're controlling you. If you allow somebody to give, to affect your emotions in a negative way, they are ultimately controlling you. And then you'll act out of character, and that's what they want. So that's why we have to guard our peace. You can't have peace when you are trying to get everyone else to see it your way, to believe what is your truth. So even though, and this is a hard one for me, y'all. I'm just now learning this after all these years. Um, even though we're wanting, to, we're wanting to help people, we're wanting to tell them, Yeshua's coming soon. Repent, repent. What you're doing is worshiping false idols and that's wrong and you better stop doing witchcraft. And I was just doing this just recently and I was doing it out of love and I thought, well, I used to do it because I was angry. Now I'm doing it out of love. But it's still only if Father has told you to go to that particular person, not scream it for everyone else to hear, okay? That's my truth. I'm sorry if some of y'all have been called to be street preachers. I appreciate y'all and I appreciate, you know, your heart for it. But for me, my truth is we're to go to those that are ready, that are seeking the truth. And that's not going to be 99% of a crowd around us. We're just going to aggravate their demons and their demons are going to lash out and they're not going to repent because they're going to be lower level anger and just wanted, wanting to shut us up, okay? So that's my truth, and that's what I'm speaking, okay? So Father has said that even the witches, even Freemasons, everybody, they have a right to their truth. If they actually think that this is helping them to do wickedness upon others, I'm sorry, but that's that's a lost soul there. And all we can do is... Speak about it like here online, and if they are led to find this channel or other channels like it, or however, they're led to someone that uh, is speaking truth to them, then they're ready for it. But like for me, 
I was guided to you, boob, from the Most High God. I'd never been online until 2015. And, well, actually, I take that back. I take that back, y'all. I had done emails, but I had never been, up, been on you, boob. And still haven't done Facebook or any of those other sites. But Father guided me. And then he put particular people in my path. One was Sarah Forth calling, Sister Karen, who became my best friend, who's gone on to be with Yeshua, Dequita Carva, um, who I don't know what happened to her, Fred Wust, who, who knows what happened to him. But I'm still standing, I'm still here, and I will still continue to speak as Father shares with me things that I feel could help y'all. So I've been called to be a messenger. I have not been called, nor have I told, nor have I ever said I was a preacher, okay? Or a teacher. I'm a messenger. And that's what an angel is known as, a messenger. Angels are of the light. There are fallen angels that are of the darkness as well. But we who are of the light, we recognize each other. Okay? So... When, you, when your peace starts being taken away from you, that's when you're trying to operate in the ego, in the flesh. Get people to see it your way. Or for me, you know, to let the, let the harassers, the workers of the matrix know, I know you're doing this on purpose. I don't say that, but I'll, say it, I'll call them out, right? And that's operating in the ego. And that breaks your peace. They... Some of them actually know what they're doing, but a lot don't. And it just ultimately breaks your peace. They think you're insane, right? And then the ones that do, they feel, they know what they're doing. They want you to react like that. And then they steal your joy, steal your peace. Okay? So when, like, for example, noise harassment, which is a fun one that they use on a lot of us, right? When it... When it really bothers you, it's because you are aware it's being done on purpose. What is the purpose? To break your peace. So don't let it. Okay? Peace is what we're striving for. That's why in the end we're warned when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes. When the Antichrist says this, when those that are working for the matrix say peace and safety, it's the opposite. It's flipped okay good is put considered evil and evil good in the end of days peace is what we are striving for which is that which is ultimately our happiness happiness comes when you find peace why do you think the dove is represented as the dove of peace and the dove landed on yeshua when he was baptized right in the waters, when he broke through the firmament, is symbolic. Then the dove of peace landed on him. Okay? Peace comes when you accept that those who choose to participate in noise campaigns, gang stalking, witchcraft, all these lower level things, trying to harm others, trying to take from others, operating in the ego, they choose to participate in it. They choose to do that. So they choose to lower their vibe and break their own peace. So because they don't have peace, they don't want us and others who have peace to have it because they don't have it. You all see? So we all have a birthright to have freedom as sovereign souls and peace unless you sell your soul to the system. When you work for the system, the satanic system, the matrix, the system steals your peace. The noise harassment affects our peace when we focus on knowing, thinking to ourselves, they're de doing this on purpose to break our peace. Okay, like say if you hear a loud bird, like a crow, which isn't the prettiest noise, right? Or a rooster, or even wind chimes. You don't get upset, or I mean, I don't. Maybe y'all do, but I don't get upset um, because you know that the bird or the wind chimes are not doing the noise on purpose to steal your peace, right? That's what it was made to do. Well, the same goes for the bots 
the workers of the system, the gang stalkers, the witches and Freemasons, oh my, because they work for the system, they were made to disrupt the peace of those who are not part of the matrix system. Does this make sense, y'all? It's like a red flag went off for me this morning. What? So when they do their construction, their con acts, just leave the area. If you can't, then guard your peace. Start singing praise and worship. Start being thankful. Do whatever you can to get your mind off of it. Guard your peace, which is a door to your heart. And then the matrix bots can't afflict you and steal your precious peace and happiness. All right. If you stay in it and focus how loud it's getting or how, you know, how they keep synchronizing at the same time you leave and you focus on it, whatever the matrix system and the bots that work for the matrix are doing to you, you end up reacting and saying something or doing something which builds your aggravation, which leads to frustration, and then ultimately anger. Then you're back down in the pit again, right? You're, you're vibing on the pit level. You feel helpless, like you can't do anything about it. But you can, y'all, you can. You have an exit, stage right. Leave the area. Get away. Take your mind off of that and onto above and not below. Above all else, guard your heart and your peace and you will remain calm and happy. Then you affect the atmosphere and ultimately others around you. Thoughts bring in positive or negative. Be the positive and shift your reality. Be thankful every day. All right, with addiction, remember... And this, this goes, this is a big thing for me, all right? This is huge. Remember when you first started it and why, whatever it is. Is it smoking, drinking, overeating, cussing, um, being rebellious, uh, spreading gossip, overspending, gambling, popping pills, uh, pot, whatever you're doing, okay? Remember when you first started it and why. I guarantee you it was to escape. Well, I shouldn't say I guarantee you, but my truth is, I'm going to be real careful how, how I phrase things, y'all. My truth is to escape the pain of being belittled, called names, falsely accused by someone very or several people very close to me when I was a child. And I didn't have the knowledge to cast out those wicked thoughts that are not coming from the Most High God who didn't say these evil things about us and to not accept them. And they got into my heart and affected and infected me and broke my peace. Then to escape, you start partaking in things like I just mentioned, smoking, drinking, drugging, uh, overeating, whatever you're doing. To escape, these thoughts of your mind. What is mind control? It's a con act. It's trolling. Satan is trolling for something to hurt you. And once he can hurt you with that infliction, with that false lie, that false narrative, that's not who you truly were made to be. He controls you. Control, get it? Conning and trolling until he affects you. And then you infect yourself with these outside escapes. We can partake in whatever we use as an escape, Father says, if we are doing it to celebrate or because we have joy. If it's not something, you know, detrimental like drugs or something. But like, and nothing, I sh let me take that back. <clears throat> Rewind. You shouldn't overdo anything. You shouldn't have no overindulgence. But like say you want to have one drink or you want to have that piece of pie or you you want to go shop for a nice pretty dress or something like that. Or you want to go to travel or something like that. You can partake in that 
is what Father's sharing with me. Instead of saying, I can never do this again. We lead ourselves into failure by thinking that. And I've been big at this. I can never do that again. I can never touch it again. And then it makes you want it. What, like as a little child when you tell, don't do that. Little Johnny, don't stick your finger in that light socket. And he goes over there, Ring! right? <laughs> that's, that's a little much. But y'all get what I'm saying. Um, you want what you can't have what they tell you you can't have so when you're telling yourself that you're feeding into it you're making yourself want it so just realize if we are not using it as an escape as to escaping our thoughts and the negative things that satan is saying and instead we learn to cast out the negative thoughts and believe what father says about us not what the liar lucy the lion loser trying to get me to be a boozer says about us then we won't use these things to escape. Father showed me to value every moment here on earth instead of trying to escape like I've been doing it. I can't wait. Yeshua's about to come. Get me out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. I just emailed a, someone, uh, I don't know, a few days ago saying, I'm ready to get out of here. I hate this place, right? I hate the system. I hate all this wickedness. I, of course, we're supposed to hate wickedness, but we're supposed to value every moment here on earth because Father granted us, granted us this life. He saved us for this final hour. We are highly favored, highly blessed to still be here. Every soul on this planet that is still here for this final shift in the matrix, bringing in the new and casting of the old, the old system is crumbling before our eyes. We are all blessed, but it's what do you do with that blessing? Are you trying to harm and curse others? Or are you trying to lift others up to where you're at? So we're to value every moment here as it's an experience for our souls to grow and to help others grow. When we lift others up, we break the matrix and the powers of Satan and we become lighter. Angels are messengers and beings of light. Everything in the matrix is designed to keep us heavy, weighed down, okay? Negative. When you don't want anything in the matrix, you don't want it. You don't need it. You're just like, oh, that would be nice to experience that, but you're not, oh, I got to have it, right? I got to have that new car. I got to have that bigger house. Then you're filled to overflowing when you don't need any of this. Don't be frightened to imagine what you wanted to be as a child and to bring that dream back. They stole that from us. We allowed it though, T.I.s. We allowed it because we didn't know any of this stuff. And Father is giving us this knowledge now. The keys to the kingdom are being given to us. Those that are sovereign souls that didn't sell out, that love the truth and don't want the lies, okay? That focus on love and things above. People of the matrix value the outside appearance. Therefore, they fill their inside with junk like Botox, plastic surgery, like Barbie. Barbie is a doll of the matrix. Hence that movie that grown adults, people in their 60s, 70s, 40s, 30s went dressed up as Barbie to go see Barbie. What? What in the world? It's because they're part of the matrix. They think that the fake is good. Instead of being who God, the creator of heaven and earth, created us all in his image. We're not supposed to be the same. We're not supposed to all be skinny sticks or supermodels or huge lips that end up making some of these people look all the same. They all look the same now and they're destroying what father created them to be. And they're keep seeking more and more and more. And they're not filling their heart with love and with peace and with truth. So they're becoming dolls of the matrix, y'all. We're to see beauty in everything. Everyone has something beautiful about them. Everyone has a right to their own truth. Instead of uh, focusing on getting that expensive mansion that costs even more to maintain and time and energy and having people help you maintain this mansion. It's what, what do you need it for? You don't need it. It's not making your happy yourself happy. It's actually adding to your stress. 
People sell out to the matrix because they live in fear, in greed, in envy, in pride, in jealousy, operating in things of the flesh, things of the ego, not in the truth. So they love the lie and were given over to the strong delusion the Bible speaks of. Once they sell out, they are even more jealous and hateful of those that didn't sell out, like us, because they did not remain true to their selves, and thus they did not remain true to the Creator who created them to be, and look how they are, all right? So, and for this final little uh, talk, I just wanted to say, go out there, end time saints, targeted elect of the most high. We're no better than anybody else. We are the elect because we chose to believe the truth more than the lie. So father chose us back. Okay. Go out there and affect your atmosphere, affect others around you with love. I went around this morning. I walked for about an hour, even though it was sprinkling. And I said hi to probably almost everybody that I passed. So I'm going to say about 40 people I passed in an hour, maybe not that many, but about 30 people I passed in about an hour walk. And I said hi to all of them. And a few of them didn't say hi back. One kind of snarled at me, but you know what? Some of them said hi back and one actually smiled and was joyful back. So there's some out there that want to be joyful too, but no one's greeting them. No one's sending light to others. That's our job, y'all. We're here to be the light.